All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, everybody, to another game, another day of competitive direct strike. With you here is GDSL people, um, Jorzel and Nova. Hey, Nova. Hello, everyone. So, this is the last semi-final before the finals. Now, after this game, we're going to find out who's going to be facing off against Grumpy Kittens in the final, and who's going to be facing off against uh, Shio Mode for that third place. So very interesting match going on now. The stakes are high. Um, whoever wins gets guaranteed, how much is it? $275 for second place? Uh, second place is 30%. Are you asking me questions on the spot? And I can't do math. <laughs> Putting you uh, on the spot. Yeah. Three hundred seventy-five for second place, and uh, right. So right now, both teams are guaranteed at least one hundred and twenty-five dollars, and whoever wins this match will get guaranteed three hundred and seventy-five dollars for their team. Mm-hmm. So very high stakes here. This is a $250 match right now. We're yeah, going uh, to have... Um, yeah, go ahead. J just to, I guess, we can a bit recap um, so far what has what has happened in the tournament. Like we had, uh, thir thir we had 30 teams. We had quite a lot of games already. I think we, me, me and you know we casted, I think, most of them. So in the semifinals, this is the second fan semifinals, and the first semifinals was between Chill Mode and Grumpy Kittens, which was 3-0 uh, for Grumpy Kittens. Then in quarterfinals, before that, we had Chill Mode versus Glory 3, uh, 3 versus 1, 4 games, uh, nice games there. We had Grumpy Kittens versus Not Fast, Just Furious, and, and uh, Readout's team had to play the David's role versus Goliath. And the uh, other bracket, we had Sweet Elephants versus Risk Refugees, 3-1. And then uh, our team, Leaked Investors versus Everyone Loves Joe, we lost uh, 3 versus 1. And Everyone Loves Joe, currently with the new Terran, Terran Zerg meta, is uh, facing Sweet Elephants. And let's see if Sweet Elephants have watched the games, have watched the replays, and have done the homework. So I'm, I'm excited to see what kind of uh, countermeasures they're going uh, gonna to utilize here. What do you think? Yes, yes, it's very interesting because we saw everyone loves Joe playing a different style, going for that uh, Terran Zerg Terran, right? It, very different from what the other teams were doing. And now we get to see if uh, Sweet Elephants did their homework. Did they prepare? Are they ready for that build? Um, and that's what we're. But I think everyone's excited to find out here, right? I think everyone's hoping that everyone loves Joe wins. There's a lot of people going on, cheering on for them because they did beat us, right? We did get second place last time. So um, I'm hoping to see everyone loves Joe doing well. Let's see. Yes, I'm excited to see. Like, uh, Of course, I, I feel a bit uh, sad that we lost the games, but well, what can we do? Uh, I would rather play than cast in uh, in these semifinals and finals, but it's okay. Like sometimes you have to take the loss and come back uh, stronger. So in this case, at least we don't have to figure out okay who is gonna stream what. So at least we have that figured out. So you know there's a silver lining in uh, everything. But uh, I I'm excited to see. You. Let's I'm excited to see the games, and I hope we're gonna see five game series. Because this is best of five, right? I'm very curious to see what Sweet Elephant's going to do, honestly. Because I'm, I'm kind of expecting everyone loves Joe to, to kind of go for a similar strategy. What, why change what worked? So this is, I think, really going to be about is Sweet Elephant's ready for that strategy? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, we are waiting on the matchup screenshot. So just to introduce the players again. So basically on Everyone Loves Joe team, we have Nedved as a team captain. Uh, 
One second. We have Nedved as a team captain, and we have Eskimo Joan agreed, and Tiger is as a backup. And on Seat Elephants. Not sure who their captain is. Ah, uh, Bunny. Bunny, Bunny, Bunny. On the Seat Elephants, Bunny, Dark White, and C. So it's an interesting team. Um, they have interesting uh, communications and, and time zones. So, but let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm I'm kind of curious to see. So basically, they kind of each each have their own strongest things, like strongest races. And let's see if they stick to their guns or they're gonna play the team game. I'm curious. So it's it's kind of hard to comment. We have to see the first screenshot, and we have to see uh, we have to see. What is going to be the matchup? Okay, we have Protoss Terran Zerg versus Terran Terran Zerg. Very nice. Okay, okay so switch. everyone loves Joe going for their standard strategy, right? Two Terrans, one Zerg. Uh, but this time from Sweet Elephants, PTZ. Very interesting. I wasn't expecting that from them. I'm very curious to see how this game one's going to go. This might decide the momentum of the whole match. So Let's Protoss, see. Terran, Zerg. So the difference here is that Zerg versus Zerg is mirror, right? So we don't have, we we don't see Protoss, Terran after that Terran, Zerg follow up. Who has the advantage here? Hmm. I. Well, it it depends. It it depends if Terran is gonna play Bio or T two here, because if you don't have. Protoss Terran after that straight up Zerg follow up. It, it's a bit different, right? You you can't really go double T2 there. And this is going to be a CVC. Do you think we're going to see that same Ravager style from Agreed? Versus Zerg? Yes. Maybe. I don't think so. I think he's gonna go with meta. He's gonna play Muta Hydralisk meta. I I would I would definitely do that because as Terran Terran Zerg you can't uh you you don't you can't really get behind. You have to push as early as possible. Yes, it's the the Protoss versus Terran. It, it's it really it's very important what happens there because if the Terran goes for a tier one kind of play, then the Protoss can't really go for Stalkers and, and try to blink Stalkers, so the Zerg on, on Sweet Elephant's side has to win, right? Mm -hmm. And if the Terran goes for a Tier 2 style, that means the Protoss can actually go for a more Stalker style, and the Zerg on lane 3 has to lose. So that's going to be very interesting what, what ends up happening here, what kind of strategy does... Uh, everyone loves Joe. Bring out and what does Sweet Elephants? How does Sweet Elephants respond to it? Yes, I think it depends if Nedved's gonna play T1 or T2. I think that's the deciding factor here. Hey, the game is getting loaded. Nice. I don't think we are gonna see T2 on the second line. So we see both Zergs as as expected going T2. Yeah, that's expected. So Nedved is currently still thinking maybe, not doing anything. And C C is doing the two adept two sentry opener. Okay, so no sentry out of C inside. That has been meta it kind of the meta switch around into that now, right? Where Protoss isn't really going for Sentry until they confirm that the Terran is going bio. I think this this is kind of a new thing, and I think this is I I would call it Nedved uh, countering Nedved meta, <laughs> but uh, probably it's gonna be the new Terran meta as well because the T two openers are gonna be more common. Uh, like I mean, Raven Liberator, like you have you have seen in in house as well that we T two Terran opener is doable. There is specific situations when you can sit on a bunker with Liberator Siege Tank Medivac. And it's a very strong um, it's a very strong way for Protoss to deal with. 
Yes, but the the thing with tier two Terran is that not just anyone can pull it off, right? Like it requires a lot of micro from the Terran side. It requires a lot of practice, and that really makes a huge difference on how you do the tier two Terran. Like it, if you practice your tier two Terran, you can definitely stack and do tons of damage. Um, but there's a lot of rooms for mistakes. So let's see how Nedvid decides to handle it. So far, he isn't really going for... Oh, yeah, he's already tier 2. Yes, he finished tier 2. So, bio option is out of the window now. Okay, and Eskimo Yo here with a full line of Marauders. Very interesting. Well, let's see... Let's see if Bunny deals with them. Because Reapers, just pure naked Reapers versus pure naked Marauders. Mm, Reapers don't do that much damage versus Marauders, but... Since the, there's a leak, if there if Eskimo Joe adds uh, Reapers next wave, then it's probably gonna be a lot stronger. Yes, Marauders also don't do a lot of damage against Reapers, and so a lot of Marauders are just lot of Roaches. So I expect a Greed's gonna go Ravager still, because yeah, just no, just no Roaches Hydra. are not gonna be enough. Four Ravens, and there's a lot of Mutalisk leak, so Ravens are gonna have to spend all the turrets. So let's see what what C inside does. Is he gonna move forward or he's gonna stay back here? But C inside's already ready. He has a lot of stalkers with a nice blink forward. Yes. Kill the ravens. The ravens have no chance of stacking. And he avoided and damage from the turrets as well with that blink. Uh, C inside, I think, is out of blinking, but he should probably just blink on the side and try to pull the wave a bit apart and increase the concave. Uh, out of blinking still wins here, but that that's like one thing that. Maybe could hey, wait, if the stalkers blink forward, then maybe the bunker... That's a lot of help on the bunker. There's two marauders still shooting at it, and it might go down. Yes, yes. Yeah. Nice job. Goes down the marauders. Targeted that cannon and went down really quickly. They're the first two ravagers. Um, let's see. Okay, there are two kills. Two kills in each. Three kills. Oh, but I like the way Dark White responded. She just added a bunch of uh, roaches, and that worked. Okay, now let's see tier two from Nedbed. Here comes the Liberator. Oh, but look at the amount of stalkers that C inside has. Just clears out all of the air Terran. Mm -hmm. just all of it went down really quickly. Yes, and uh, Nedbed is full front. I'm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like what I think he tried to save the bunker maybe, but the bunker died, so probably it would be good if he moves back. And these marauders, just pure know. marauders, is doing nothing against the mix of marauder reaper, and so bunny is very strong pushing his wave. But here comes a greed with some sick bios, kills a ton of Terran. Yes, that leak is pretty devastating on the zerg. He only has three ravagers left. It's not going to be enough. Yes, and they're pretty weakened, so it just takes one or two shots for them to finish them off. And the thing about, like, if if Dark White is pushing in, Dark uh, Zerg has a lot of tools to deal, to help out with uh, Lib Raven, like Infestor Fungal, Viper, Parasitic Bomb, Mutalist itself. They're all good units to help to deal, uh, help help the Protoss to deal with, uh, with the Ravens and Liberators. Okay, some mar some ravens are starting to stack, but two ravens is that enough? There's no marines, so ravens are gonna survive. That is very true. Bunny has no anti air at all, and those ravens are going to survive. But okay, let's see. This this is a very strong wave, right? This is the best wave they're gonna get. No, they have gotten so far, right? No, Tons well, of ravagers. Anti armor ravens. missile. Yes, and turret. Ah, oh, two anti-armor missiles. Is it gonna be enough? Hydralis are just too strong. So okay, missed a lot of bios there. Yes, and there's the fungal. So first AOE damage and probably the shout. Let's see, Dark throw the shout. Okay, there's a shout, a bit delayed, but energy was an issue. And that would shoot all the anti-armor missiles and ruins. So basically, currently six minutes in the game. Uh, Sweet elephants has done very good job in an early game and cleared up every corner so basically C inside skipped the sentry so he guessed where, what the Nedwood's gonna do so that gave him an, uh, an advantage 
and uh, versus Zerg, like just playing meta gives advantage here. And uh, as a Terran, basically you just counter what you see. You just counter what you what you see from opponent, and and you should be kind of fine. So I don't think uh, let let let's see if uh, everyone loves Joe team can pull out a rabbit out of the hat here. Well, uh, Ravagers are stronger in the mid game, and we are approaching the mid game now. Um, so let's see if the Ravagers can pull off Everyone Loves Joe. But so far, it seems like Sweet Elephant is completely dominating. They're getting all the right units. They're not letting Everyone Loves Joe stack. Mm -hmm. And look at the Hydus, how much damage they're going to do the, to, the, to the wave. So having anti-air here in this situation helps a lot. And uh, C inside is adding Disruptor, even Nedved is full air. He's adding Disruptor for the next wave. So basically, they're already covering potential stacking opportunities here. And even the Infestor Hydalis still survived for 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 Dark Bite save, for Nedved save, and for Eskimo Joe's wave. Look, Bunny doesn't even have to face his own wave. It's getting completely cleared by the Zerg and Protoss, so... Very good job from Sweet Elephant. I think everyone loves Joe here is really on the back foot. He, they're gonna need some fantastic Ravager Biles to get out of this one because so far it seems like Sweet Elephant's the one in the lead. Mm -hmm. mm, all the Fester's all are in the same spot. Um, probably, maybe it'll help with the control with the Hot King, but probably maybe a good idea just to. To avoid the Ravager Bile damage incoming. Nedved has T3, so he has extra range, he's adding armor now. So probably he's gonna try to maximize stacking here. Uh, the the Libs are gonna survive, so this is gonna be a problem for the Terran to clear out. Oh, but look at this Dark White going for that tier 3. I think she might be going for early Vipers. This could be significantly um change right the the vipers you get a parasitic bomb on the liberators and ravens oh my god those are never going to stack that that's what i mean zerg has tools zerg has very good tools that uh, that helps especially viper in this situation just one two parasitic bombs clear so much so it helps so much it's uh, it's basically the best thing you can do and if you're pushing you can afford you can kind of gamble and afford this early t3 then I think that's definitely a call to a good call. I like, I like what Dark White is doing. She's up against Ravagers, and she had kind of has units that attacks from all amounts of ranges, right? She has Roaches, Mutas, Hydras, and Lings, and those all attack from different um, ranges. And so it's really hard to hit Ravager Biles on just different ranges of units. And so she's really she's doing really well up against those Ravagers. Mm hmm. Yes. I think Dark White's position is very good. Uh, I agree with the point. Probably would add like another layer of Mutas in the back, just to help out with the uh, Lib Raven. It's... Oh, an Eskimo Joe here, adding Marines. I don't think that's what he needs right now. He 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 needs to be adding Ravens. Well, basically, look how many uh, Marauders Eskimo Joe has. The Ravens are gonna do sh jitsu, uh, sh uh, nothing. You need uh, you need something that kills Marauders. And Marines is one of the best units to do, though, do so. And if there's a lib leak, Marines are gonna help with that as well. So I think having Marines is a correct call. In theory, Marines sound really well, but w w at least in my experience in practice, the Marines have never contributed, um, have never helped push back. They usually um, let you die slower. Um. I will disagree with this one, though. You can steam your marines to the zero if you need to die faster. But when it comes to like just pure DPS, marine is a very good unit. It's cheap. Yes. Uh, liberators, li liberators do the least amount of damage to them because it's uh, a lot of single units, a lot of overkill. So I agree with marines, building marines. Yes, but the problem is that Bunny already has Reapers, and so your Marines are uh, just not gonna die very quickly. I mean, Bunny needs to add Marines. Or you thought about Nedved? Oh, wait, wait, wait. we have a... Uh, Eskimo Joe. Uh, okay. Eskimo Joe's Marines. Yeah. Okay, my bad. No, no, I think uh, Bunny definitely needs Marines. I'm not 100% not sure about uh, Nedved. Phew. Eskimo Joe, sorry. It's a late evening in Europe. 
That's okay, man. Okay, those liberators are doing a ton of damage to the Protoss. Yes, everything is disabled, Matrix. Let's. Um, okay, this let's is see. a lot of liberators. Eskimo Joe here is pulling off a stack. Let's see. Okay, two towers. They are clearing out. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, oh, how man. many leaps survive? Two leaps. Bunny already ready for that stack with those two towers. Manages to clean well, up almost of all the liberators. A lot of marauders, a lot of marauders that stayed. Oh, and he received marauders, not on, uh, not on uh, Ravagers. This is actually dangerous. Oh. Uh, Nedved needs this to siege his leap. He's watching, I don't know what. Yes, this is very dangerous because uh, agreed with those bios, he's very dangerous and managed to clear out all of Dark White. And they've turned it around. As I said, Ravagers are very strong in the mid game. And, well, this might be the beginning of the comeback for Everyone Loves Joe. Okay, Nedved is uh, adding Widow Mines. His all units are super clumped up, so one or two storms will be very good there. Uh, some people don't really agree about about storm, but I would say the storm is uh, definitely a necessary thing there. Uh, let's see, yes, the Phoenix has plus two. Okay, good. Let's see, but Bunny, those, if you can, Bunny can clear. There's Void Ray and Phoenix. Templars, man, those high Templars are draining the Ravens out of their energy. And so the Ravens are stacking, but they're not really contributing a lot to the fight. And Bunny's one Liberator, 11 kills. Wow, insane That's... value from a Liberator. Okay, a the, the Liberator is gonna card. kill the Ravagers too. 13 kills, 14 kills. That's a very good 225 mineral investment. Okay. 15 kills and but still all, alive. But all the Dark White's units are clumped up, so Ravagers are having a field day, but that one Liberator is just carrying the weight. 20, 21 kills. And, and it's still, still alive. <laughs> okay. 21 blink. kill liberator. Okay, there's a scan ahead for the for the disruptors. Ooh, oh, that was a, such a good shot. shot. Eskimo Joe put all the vitamins together with his bio. Doing a favor. Kills on that, 11 kills on that disruptor. Really good value. And it seems like a one liberator and one disruptor is making a huge difference in. in all of this matchup with I hope they scan I hope they scan the Vidal Mines. Otherwise there's gonna be a problem for the Mutalisks. Okay, Vidal Mines scan. are scanned. Okay, they're dead. Okay, good. Okay, this that is one good. That was very one scary. liberator turned it completely around again. And now it's sweet elephants pushing again. Yes, and uh, there is fifteen minutes of income advantage and bunker advantage though, so, since this bunker didn't die. So there's a lot of yeah. lot of uh, money that Sweet Elephants has in, the, in their scope. Well, Sweet Elephants oh. took the bunker down at, at three minutes. Look at the oh parasitic bomb. <laughs> Look at that parasitic bomb. All the liberators are almost dead. So even the phoenixes just have to tap them and they go down. Well, they still managed to survive. Yes, yes, yes. I think you need uh, Storm and more phoenix. He only has how many six ceilings? I would get, I will have a line and I would have a, at least one, two, three high templars for the storm as well. Oh, because I like this from he, Bunny. He said because you can yeah, storm ahead. you can storm even Eskimo Joe's wave. Like there's a lot of Marines and uh, Reapers, so even if you come in and storm the Liberated Raven, there is bio uh, at the bottom of it. I think it benefits. Well, I like this from Buddy. He added he's adding more Liberators, and one of them got 21 kills plus. So adding more is definitely a good idea. I think Darkwing needs Dark Autolisks. White... Yeah, Darkwing now has Lurkers. Mm -hmm. I would say she needs Autolisks to help. To help, uh, Autolisks are fat units. Kind of like Ravagers are the, like a counter for the Autolisks, but at 15 minute mark, I think you need them to kill the Ravagers faster. Oh, and those Void Rays are just targeting all of the liberators and they go down yes and boy this stall marines back and now it's naked marauders up against bunny and bunny has thors and liberators just shooting down all those marauders look how many rav ravages agreed has let me put the greed's uh, point of view he has a uh, hotkey he's piling the liberators down yeah, it's kind of hard time to micro micro the Ravagers. Ravagers are very tough to micro. 
Tough but he's landing the bios. Like, almost all the Hydras go down on that engagement. But the problem is that there's units from all ranges, right? Like, there's Mutas as well. There's Lurkers as well. So he can't hit all of them. And now we're already 17 minutes in. And so the, the mineral advantage for Sweet Elephants is starting to pile up. You can see that these matchups are turning one uh, more one-sided as time goes on. Okay, there's a lot of Liberators that are not getting killed. Uh, how many Tors we have? We have four Tors. Let's see Let's see how many Liberators from that survives. Everyone loves Joe had like a window to come back and they did manage to come back but then after one Liberator getting 20 plus kills, one Disruptor with 11 kills, Sweet Elephants turns it around and I think the, the window for Everyone Loves Joe has, has gone out. I think so. Too. Oh, and now... And now here comes Dark White with the Ultra. Yes, I think Ultra is definitely unnecessary there. Yes, the Vials have a hard time uh, shooting against the Ultras, as Ultras are very tanky. Mm -hmm. And while Ravagers are busy with uh, Ultralisks, then Hydralisks can add uh, additional DPS necessary. Oh, there is no Parasity Bomb, unfortunately. Okay, F feedback, very nice. Do we have probably plus Okay, plus three. Maybe not. Maybe yes. Okay, Nedved is 3-3. Three, three. While Sea Inside only has plus two attack on both air and ground. And so the uh, upgrade advantage is for Nedved. Mm -hmm. But is that enough? There's a lot of doors. So Bunny has enough anti-air to clear it out. Okay, now agreed with his own Ultralis, but the Ultralis doesn't even reach Dark White. The Liberators quickly take care of it. Yes, and Mutalis is coming to save the Libs. Oh, doesn't get the Liberators, they're still alive. The Liberators are kind of low HP, so basically they are one shot away. So there's a part of sitting on the Ravens, two, two Ravens go down immediately. Uh, I would love actually to see a Disruptor here, just to help to clear the Vida Wands faster, so the Stalkers don't have to shoot at them. Oh, Ooh, that was a nice Disruptor shot. Yes. Um, Eskimo Joe is not really spreading his way for, for the Disruptors. Maybe to help to catch up faster, but like in my opinion, probably would be good to start splitting up a bit. And uh, put the video mine separately out. I like this from Sweet Elephant. They're really respecting their opponents. They have not gotten a single gas 19 minutes in. And so they're very much respecting everyone loves Joe. There's a lot of libs. Lo eight libs. Ah, uh, seven, sorry. Seven libs at plus three. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, Corruptors, Mutalisks. Barely, barely. Oh. Like, on the edge. Liberators are cleared, but there's like a couple of Ravagers that cannot do a bit of... They're kind of low HP, so they're not going to do that much damage. Uh, C shoots his Disruptors. I think that's the correct call here. Oh, All the units okay. here are super clumped up. I think like... Uh, this yeah. A lot of Warriors are going to help out to clear. How many Immortals do we have? We have... Six Immortals. Okay. There was a lot of Immortals, but Nedved did... It, disabled them and so the thors managed to stay alive but only two thors against bunnies which already has five thors okay this is again dangerous a lot of marauders are surviving but not enough anti -air. so liberator is going to survive and liberators are devastating versus this kind of ultralisk ravager so ravagers have to spend the bios on the liberators while they could spend the bios on the hydralisks Let's see the micro. Uh, all the units of Dark White are clumped up perfectly in a line, so it's easy to bile them down. Oh, and Agreed manages to turn it around with insane bile micro. Really good job from him. Now there's a ton of Ravagers still alive. Yes, I see and spent his inside disruptors. See inside, it's forced to use his disruptors, lifts the Ravagers. But now look at the amount of Liberators from Nedved, and the Protoss units are not getting even close to the Liberators. Pew pew, everything goes down. Oh, this is a turn back. I, 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 I thought Sweet Elephants had it, but this is very dangerous. Let's see if they can manage to control the situation. I really, or... got, a, 
I, or the situation's gonna go out of their hands. I really thought after 17 minutes of having middle income, they would be able to push, but it seems like, no, everyone loves Joe really confident in their late game, and they just kept going at it, and they've actually turned it around. And now it's gonna be agreed with a lot of Ravagers up against Dark White, and Dark White barely has any units left because the Liberators have shot everything down. What are we seeing? <laughs> I think we're seeing Agreed very happy hitting his Bios. Now Let a lot of the Protoss is dying before it even gets to the Terran. Let that one door expired. It was doing damage for three waves. We have 3-3 three, three Thor, 3-3 three, three Libs and Ravens, and yeah, C inside has no armor, plus 2 attack, and he just gets evaporated there. And here's the problem, that these Liberators are shooting at all of the bio of Bunny, and so all the bio goes down, and then Eskimo Joe can come in with his Marauders and clear up the Thors. Well, Liberators... Actually, but never mind. Liter <laughs> liberators liberators cleared it out. So Cannon is... <laughs> Cannon is dead? Okay... Okay, so 23 minutes in, after losing the bunker at 3 minutes, yes. everyone loves Joe. Now takes down the opponent's bunker. I, I, I'm che checking uh, YouTube live chat just to see when the... Well, there's a stream delay, so they don't know yet. <laughs> but I, I expect the comments are just gonna start rolling in. Oh, and look at this. Everyone loves Joe. Now has 4 gases up against Sweet Elephant Zero. And so if they managed... They, they turned around middle... And now they're gassing up. Let's see how that plays out for them. Because well, the leaks so far are doing a ton of damage. I think they are doing the correct call because the problem is it's a 14 minute game, right? And they don't have Protoss. They don't have Protoss with uh, Disruptors. So it could very well be a 14 minute game here. And, and they pushed back at, what, 22 minutes? So bottom team has a lot of income advantage for middle that they need to compensate now. So they need to catch up. Oh. And I like this from Eskimo Joe. He's going for Vikings, not letting any air units stack from Bunny. Oh, look at that. The Ultras are almost gone. They're very squishy now. And here comes Agreed's Ultras. It's and they completely smash. They completely smash through. And there's still a lot of Ravagers left. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It looks very, very dire for Sweet Elephants in this game. I, I think they need to recognize the time on the clock and I uh, probably need to go for the gas strategy. Like to try the best, maybe win that 14 minute game. They're but still yeah. trying to get that. They're still trying to get middle and it's not working out for them. Everyone loves Joe took down middle at 22 minutes and they have not let go. Yes, this is definitely a game to study, like in the sense of uh, replay analysis, what, what was really going on. So the first T4 is going on from Nedved. Uh, Eskimo Joe is following up, Dark White is following up. And uh, C is going T3. So yeah, I, I think they need to go for 14 minute income victory here. They need to gas up as soon as possible. And I think that's the only way how can they take the game. Because they could they could win the game. If uh, if uh, everyone loves Joe doesn't doesn't kill sweet elephants here in 14 minutes, I think they can definitely win by income. But they need to catch yeah. up on the gases. Yeah, because the problem yeah. that they're having right now is that Protoss is actually not very strong in the late game, right? And so the the Protoss is kind of a weakness in in their army. It it's really good early on, but now it's not that strong, and so you're not gonna get really pushed with the Protoss. So you definitely have should go for that income strategy. I think it would work out better for them. I have to agree with you there. Because well, just look at the amount of Liberators still alive. This is way too many. Well, yes, yes, yes. Well, it's kind of hard to decide if they need to go or not. But that that the time is clicking. They either have to do it now or then uh, the everyone loves Joe is going to catch up with those four gases. Yeah, and now tier 4 is hitting in, and so this really favors the team who already has middle. And you can see that playing out where now everyone loves Joe is just mashing their waves, right? 
Mm-hmm. Well, because it's double, it's, it's double mirror, right? You have TBT and you have Zerg versus Zerg. So we see the first gases. I think they recognize it. Uh, let me check real quick if they scanned the opponent's gases. Yes, they scanned the gases here and they scanned the first one gas here. So I think they recognize that they need to do uh, 12 gas strategy here. Yes, I like that a lot because the, the problem with Protoss, let's talk about a, a lot a little bit more about uh, the weakness of Protoss late game, right? So Protoss doesn't really have a lot of viable units when you go tier 3. And so you can see that all of his upgrades lack behind Everyone loves Joe. C inside has plus two attack, plus two ground, plus two air, and plus two air armor. Well, you can see from Nedved, he's 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Mm -hmm. Well, Nedved, like, the armor really doesn't do anything versus uh, Liberator unit, because Liberator does, like, single damage, like, insane single damage. So basically, armor, okay, you instead of 90 damage, you're gonna do 89, so that's not a big difference. But, uh... I think from T3, Carriers is a, definitely an option, yeah, but I think that the Zerg here has a potential to boil down the Nexus, so I think that could be one of the potential scenarios. The Protoss problem is that many gets pushed back, like versus Lib Raven, Lib Raven Thor, the Protoss is just fucked, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, but even against Leaks, right? Right now, Agreed is also 3-3, three, three. and he smashed through all of the Protoss units. That's kind of the same story, right? Cross about the 60 damage. Yep, and just so many bios just smashed through everything. The Phoenixes went down, the Void Rays went down. He even had enough bios to hit the Nexus. Six Lurkers, maybe go mass Lurker strategy. Mm, it's hard to tell what they could do here. Because the Ultra Ravager, just the DPS of that is insane. So that comes in smashing. Okay. Sweet Elephants can get the second gas now, but they're choosing not to. So they all going for one gas. Meanwhile, Everyone Loves Joe, already all of them on two gases. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say they... They kind of have to risk it and take another gas here. Because every second they're waiting, that's the mineral income they're not getting. Okay, and there's a lot of marauders here. Very soon, these marauders are gonna start reaching the Nexus once that tiered 4, level 2, and level 3 start hitting up, those marauders are going to start hitting the Nexus, and they're going to start feeling the pressure real soon. And so they really need to hold on for 10 more minutes. Well, Nexus has already lost uh, 300 of the base HP. And yes, and Corruptors, now the Corruptors are manually peeing. Oh, look at the amount of Ravagers that just went down to the Disruptors. They're very squishy units. Easy to hit with those Disruptor shots. But the Bios are still landing on the Nexus. The Nexus is already below 50% HP. Look at how fast the Taurus just smashed through the Protoss air units. It's, it's crazy to watch. A lot of Liberators. Like, Nedved has how many? Almost uh, f f 14 Liberators. So many Libs. Okay, and here's the problem. The Marauders are going to start shipping away at the Nexus. And then after the Marauders comes the Ravager Bile. So actually, this might be it. Agreed may come here and just try to bow down the Nexus and get their first win. Yes, yes, yes. It might. Looks, looks, looks. Looks dire. <laughs> but uh, we have to give credits to everyone. Love show. Like, they... They... Tried and pushed back all the way, like 20 minutes. Like most of the teams, like kind of after 15 minute mark, kind of gas out and don't try that much. But they tried as as hard as they can all the way until they managed to push back. Yeah, so. and sweet elephants. It's not like they they 
they tried to play it safe, right? They went, didn't go gas, they respect their opponents, they kept, they went for vipers, all of the units to try to stop the opponents from stacking, but everyone loves Joe, just somehow find a way, found a way to stack anyway and push middle at 22 minutes. Well, that's the uh, thing about lips, right? You have to kill them every wave. There's, if you miss one wave and you miss micro or something, or something un unlucky happens, it, it it could be dangerous. You saw there was like two mo two moments of very dangerous situation, like when Bunny was versus Lips and he had to clear out a bit of a leak, and then the second time it was devastating. The second time it was more leak and there was not enough units to clear out. Okay, I like this agreed when got that one swarm host to try to help with the disruptor shots, but I think C inside is microing, let's see. Of course he's micro. Ooh, perfect disruptor shots, nice. He will not get that far in the tournament without disruptor micro. And there is counter vipers, so agreed is adding his own vipers as well. Add parasitic bomb. There are ghosts for EMP. Uh, I kinda like that. When you're pushing EMP is very good versus Protoss. Like to help out to take out like thirty percent of the uh, of the HP vitality. Man. Stalkers are so strong in like the first five minutes and then after like 20 minutes they're completely useless they're, they're, They feel like paper. The Terran can just like wipe them off completely mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, um, Everybody loves Joe's game at this moment They have six what seven gases so Plus they're, the they're, they're gonna, e even if it goes uh, to the 40 uh, minutes. Sorry, six. Sorry, what? Uh, plus, the, they have seven gases plus the six from middle, right? Yes, 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 yes. So I think even if it goes up to 14 minutes, they're gonna have enough money to push back. Uh, yeah, to get a uh, income advantage as well. If it even get to that point, because now we're gonna have tier four level three, and the Marauders get really quickly, and, and they like sniping Nexuses. So let's see if it even gets to the forty minute mark. So many Liberator spam. Nedved really going for that Liberator strategy, and it's working out really well for them too. Mm -hmm. Here comes the cleanup crew, doing what it does best. Just cleaning up any remains left. Okay, 30, let's, let's check the resources. 700, 500, so almost everybody is ready for T4. I mean, next level. Three gases out of Nedved. They're feeling very confident, man. At least we they see, uh, at least we see Void Race benefiting from the T4 now, adding that extra DPS versus Corruptors in Mutilis and other armored units. Yeah, there's way too many Liberators. Nedved is just doing a great job of destroying the, the, the Protoss. Nothing survives, the Liberator clears everything, and the Ravens disable. Anything so the Protoss isn't even shooting. I think that 10 Tors with plus 3 as well does the uh, some of the heavy lifting there. That's also very true. Tors deal with the Protoss air very quickly. Okay, and here's what I'm saying the Marauders they get they get they turn really fast after that level 3. They are almost reaching the Nexus, but Dark White saves it just in time. Lots of Ling Ultra. Mm -hmm. Lot of Corruptors. Lot of Vipers as well. Five. Wait, is six Vipers out of a greed? I think it's a okay number. Like when you're pushing, you can afford uh, luxuries. <laughs> I think he doesn't need to pull units to just disable it and let all the units. Because the units he's pulling are not getting damage from uh, Parasitic Bomb. So basically, as a Viper, you can just turn it off and pull like Immortals, like ground units manually, if you have a spare APM. What do you think about the Mama ship? 
I think he's trying to save the Nexus and go for 14 minute win, but I'm not sure if they scan the gases. They need the gas if they want to do that. They haven't scanned second time, so they don't know that they're actually sitting on a lot of gas already. So basically saving Nexus strategy is good, but you need uh, you need the income strategy behind it. So it's 3 Liberators. minutes, let's see. Liberators do an insane amount of damage against Ultras, man. That's so strong. It's kind of hard to miss Ultras, you know, it's a big unit. You can insert like Joe Mama joke. Joe Mama joke. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Corruptors are good against massive units, so the Mama ship barely survives with 8 HP left. Ah, the Parasitic took, <laughs> took it down. Oh, there's a Parasitic bomb on every air toss. Mm -hmm. So all the shields of the Protoss air goes down. Now Nedved even adding his own Vikings. Yes, that's why, that's why Zerg is so such a good ways to have when you are pushing like the, the those key units like wipers what ravage uh, agreed almost sold all his corruptors i clicked on his <laughs> power field and he's like i think accidentally trying to sell everything um okay now the marauders are gonna reach the nexus and it will go down maybe yep goes down 38 minutes yes wow, wow. man what a game one yes full of Comebacks and swings. Definitely an interesting game. Uh, definitely an interesting game. We see C inside with uh, 16 Stalkers, uh, 16 Phoenix, um, 8, 9, and 10, 11. Dude, dude at Phoenix. the end there, Nedved had four gases. And so they were very confident also about winning on income. Well, yes, they they need to catch up because they know that it's 22 minutes, right? So 22 minutes they were behind, so they need to catch up. If it goes to 40 minutes, it would be it would be pretty sad if you take 22 minutes, you push back, and then you lose a 14 minute income. So you need to in in houses. It's always so funny that people uh, people forget that the 14 minute roll exists, and then oh, we lost the game by seven minerals. You know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone loves Joe is surprising yet once again. Losing middle and then still turning it around after 20 minutes plus. They lost the bunker at 3 minutes too. So it was a very fast bunker loss. Mm, was it 3 minutes? Three. It was like 3 minutes and 20 seconds, 30 seconds, something like that. Mm, I guess, yes. Yeah, definitely interesting. Uh, let me open a lobby and I will be muted for like a minute. Okay. I'd really like to see a different style coming out of Sweet Elephants, right? PTC didn't work, so I want to see them try something different. They they need different races or at least a different uh, positions on the, the races because PTC did not work. It seemed like it played into es uh, everyone loves Joe's hands. They were prepared for the PTZ and they won. Okay, so we're just getting set up, ready and ready to go. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the matchup screenshots real soon. Mm -hmm. Sweet elephants, man. Th that's a very painful loss. They must have felt very confident. They had middle for like 20 game, 20 minutes. Everything was going really well. They had that one liberator with like 21 plus kills. That disruptor that landed with 11 kills. Everything was going in their favor until it didn't. Mm -hmm. Well, th that's the thing. You have to play every every wave. If you make... You, you only need to make like one mistake. And it's easy to... That one mistake can be utilized. So... I think I mentioned that in one of the brackets or quarterfinals, I don't remember when I mentioned, is that when it comes to high-level competitive, like the racetrack, when you have high-level players, basically what happens, they are looking for small, small mistakes. And when the mistake happens, then they just take full advantage of that mistake what the opponent team did.
And to give credit to everyone on job, they practiced a lot. They practiced a lot their builds. It's been paying off. Like, wow, man. <laughs> Taking middle back after 22 minutes. Okay, here we have the screenshot. And once again, PTC from Sweet Elephants. We have Protoss versus Zerg. Huh. In this case, I will have to give advantage to Sweet Elephants due to the matchup. Yes, um, Eskimo Joe was teams actually the one that switched around. Now the Zerg, instead of being on the third lane, it's on the first lane. And so it's going to be facing off against that Protoss. And the Protoss, man, I see inside is really good in that PVC matchup. He, he knows how to blink those stalkers just perfectly to get a, an insane advantage. So I, I have to completely agree with you there. I, I, I have to give this one to Sweet Elephants. But let's see how it plays out. But the big difference here is that you cannot play Ravagers, right? Versus Protoss. You have to play a... Ling and Fester meta. That is very true, but we'll agree go for that style. Well, we'll see. He did it versus us, right, in the first game. And it's going to be Nedved in that third position. Mm -hmm. So N Nedved is going to be up against the Zerg. And I think they're going to try to stack Liberator Raven again. But let's see. If he does Liberator Raven, Dark White knows exactly what she needs to do. I think uh, Zerg... Zerg has easier time clearing out Lib Raven than Protoss. Because you can have Banelings for the turrets, you can have Hydralisk Infestor Mutalisk. So you have more DPS and you have better counter, like better hard counter units. Well, somehow Eskimo Joe seems always finds a way to stack even after 20 minutes plus. So it's very interesting to watch them play. Let's see how this game goes. Oh, look at this instant links from Agreed. Just loads the game and already starts with a lane of links. He's building them in the back, interestingly. Let's see, he's building one front. So he's not going to get the middle advantage. Bunny is trying to get in Agreed's head with some uh, mind games. I like the Dark Pets going T2 instantly. She's like not wasting any time. Not even thinking about Link Bane, just. Oh, uh, Hydra Infestor. Okay, nice pullback from C. So this stalker is gonna survive. Yeah, but uh, Eskimo Joe is on the other side, so these stalkers don't matter. Only for, I guess, yeah, they have mid income. So these st three stalkers gave the mid income. Okay, let's see the fight here. Some Marauders oh, a long sleepers. time. Okay, there's enough Marauders to clear the Reapers. And Eskimo Joe's been going going for that Marauder style again. Mm -hmm. But it's okay, since Nedved didn't build anything, uh, Dark Red's gonna clear this out and get middle income again. Okay, but Dark White already revealed that she's gonna go for Hydra and Fester. How is Nedved going to respond? Is he still gonna go for Tier 2? He, he's still Tier 1. He hasn't softed at all, so I think he's gonna... Uh push T1. But the thing is, if he pushes T1 and Biome or other Marine and he wins the wave, C just blinks back. So that's why I think... Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard. So Nedved decides to go, okay, he goes Bio. He wants to kill kill Dark White. Look at the way C inside is doing his, approaching his Stalkers. He's using one Stalker at the front and blinking it away to attract all the Lings. And then a lot of Stalkers survive. But... Mm. They could at lose the, same the bunker time, here. But at the same time, so do a lot of Ling survives. They could lose the bunker here. I mean, uh, Sweet Elephants. Yeah, Nedved actually went for that bio play. And so, I think Hydras are not that strong against Marines. Um, quite low like amount of Marauders. Okay, bunkers be safe, safe because of the fungal. 
So you want you really want infestors to clear the marines, but uh, I don't know, man. There, there's just so much bio from Nedved that I think he can push. Oh. Um, agreed misses that fungal. Partially. Or fully. Okay, there's gonna be fungal and bio. Booms. But there's a lot Sick. of stalkers survive. There's nine stalkers, and there it's gonna be a problem. But there's a lot of marauders, so stalkers actually would be benefiting just blinking on the sides and doing extra damage instead of tanking here. Let the reapers tank with the marauders. And C inside is not blinking forward with his stalkers, which I, nope. like it's... you said, I think it's the correct call. Yes, I don't think the auto blink is correct call. I don't think auto blink is correct call. You just need to blink on the sides to increase the concave, to increase DPS. Yes. Okay, we see two fungals. Okay, Darkway but Nedved have needs more arrow. marauders. Like, well, the thing is, he wants to lose his wave, right? He wants his wave. Lose lose yes, this is perfect scenario. So there's no blink back and there's not enough. Like, one hide is not going to do enough damage. So this is perfect scenario. So Nedved, uh, by accident or on purpose, did perfectly. Okay, nice. Uh, probably more Hydralis would be needed here, but let's see if Agreed manages to... Okay. Saves an Infester perfectly. Oh, look at that sick. Fungals. Fungals, everything. And now there's so many Marauders from Eskimo Joe. I think he's going to push this. Yeah. Stalkers are not that good against Marauders. They, they go down. Even with the leak, the Fungals are just reigning supreme. Mm-hmm. Okay, this uh, if C doesn't save the cannon here and decides to blink back. Okay, fungal. Okay, fungal is out. Okay, cannon it's saved. Okay, let's see if the blink back is there. Blink back. Okay. Fungal just do so much damage against bio man. Like, oh my god, so sick. Well, yes. Especially in you need early to split. Game. You need to split the bio. Especially in these early rounds. Okay, okay there's saving. C inside decided to blink all back. Mm, I'm not sure if that's gonna play out. Okay, the bio bunny put some of the bio in the back. Uh, I would rather see like more bio in the back just to try to avoid the fungal. And C could blink here and here. That could help there. But it's gonna be enough. I think will it will it gonna be enough? Yes, I think it will oh, be enough. Okay, this is very good for uh, for sweet elephants. Three fungals, three infestors, hide lisks. Um, I think Nedved armor. is there, there, he's trying to start to win, right? Like he he's going for a lot of marauders, which is what you want because the fungals clear the clear the marines really quickly, right? And so you want marauders that stay alive even after being fungal. Yes, because uh, the different the thing is that Protoss is adding zealots, right? So basically you want to start pushing because the blink backs, uh, pre-blinks are not going to be that effective. Basically you blink back and you, you lose zealots. So at this moment, at 6 minute marks, he, he, you need to go for a kill. Oh man, and look at those fungals. And now with a lurker, that lurker is actually adding a lot of damage. Already has 3 kills. And the fungals are just so good landing on everything. Okay, there's and a blink on the side. Is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough? We have plus one. Is the stalker going to carry out? No, the marauders are just doing too much. Oh, there's auto fungal. Oh, no. Okay. Let's see if any of the fungals are saved. Oh, the fungals have cooled down. Yeah, there's too many, too little fungals. And the problem is that even if she landed the fungals, look at the amount of marauders that Nedved had. That bunker is on serious risk of going down. If not this wave, then the next one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, let's see the stalker. Okay, stalkers are blinking back. And there's a fungal, so all the stalkers are going to go down. Oh, Shane fungal, actually. Even sicker. Yeah. Yep, Fungus on everything. Infester, a very good unit. Look at the amount of damage those three There's Infesters are uh, putting. And now the bunker is going to go down. Look at the amount of Marauders hitting it. And now it, it's everyone loves Joe with that bunker going down on 7 minutes. And 30 seconds. 
There's a I think I think there's a bit of a panicking going on. There's no scan on the lurker, and um, the, I I saw Dark White throwing three fungals at uh, in one spot. So I think a bit of a small panicking is going on. So let's see if uh, Sweet Elephants can manage to uh, calm the nerves down and pull together a, a, a complex strategy. Yeah, there is a lurker stacking now, and lurkers are very strong against links. So this this is potentially a a way they can come back, right? Dark White, if she manages to, to stack enough Lurkers, that can really do a lot of damage against what a Greed has. That's so one there way is still hope. how to do it, yes. There's one way how to do it. Then they basically need to switch up positions. They're currently still trying to go for PD stack, but with three Infestors from a Greed and a Hydra Link, uh, PD stack may not be possible anymore. Maybe with Disruptor Micro, like very good Disruptor shots, and you kill most of the Agreed's wave, since, you know, his Hydralisk Infestor is all, all together. Maybe, but... Yeah, it's... He decides to go for Immortal. What do you think about Agreed? He's been going for early gas every game. He, last game, he also got a one gas, even though they were losing. And now he got, again, one gas ahead of his teammates. Yes and no. Like nine minutes is okay timing for the first guys. I th I think it's okay, and I think they recognize that Terran, like only Terran that uh, Sweet Elephants has is versus Terran, so there's not gonna be like huge Liberator stack or anything like that. So I think it's I okay, okay, yeah, okay, guys. And I like this from Eskimo Joe. He got a tank, and tanks are very good against Bio. So I I, I like where he's taking this. And the tanks are also very strong against that Hydra and Fester style. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One siege tank I think is fine. Yes, uh, we see gas from Eskimo Joe and gas from Nedved. Uh, I would I would rather see them split out the gas. It's like uh, they they kind of took it in the same time. So uh, I would like in perfect scenario you can one take gas and another one takes after like two or three waves and another one after like two or three waves. Or well, maybe that's too extreme, but well, kind of. Just split it out evenly a bit more. We see Mutalisks from Agreed. Uh, I would love to see upgrades, uh, damage upgrades on Hydralisks as well. We see Links with plus two, that's very good. Do we see range? There's no. <laughs> 2 2 Vio going up against Agreed that only has plus one armor. <laughs> I think it's okay because he just wants to die as fast as possible, right? I, I, I would instead love to see attack upgrades and uh, range upgrades. But it's a small mistake. So it's uh, we are cherry picking here again. So. so they are pushing and they are winning. So whatever they do is fine, as long as they cover cover all the potential pushback strategies. Because as well, we saw in the last game, you can even push back at 22 minutes. Yeah, so I'd, I'd like to see some sort of stacking strategy going on. For a look at this bunny selling his marine and reapers and everything. Now going for battle cruisers and liberators. So he's trying something up. He's switching it up, and that's what I'd like to see from him. Because Eskimo Joe doesn't have a lot of anti-air, and he, I think Bunny's going to try to capitalize on it. But they, they only get one or two chances before, Biggest before problem, Eskimo Joe realizes, right? And he goes doors. Bunny doesn't have range. He doesn't have, he doesn't have range, and I don't, I don't see Eskimo Joe doesn't have Raven. So if there's no anti-armor on, on uh, BCs, the Marines are going to take a long time to kill it. On oh, the microbial shroud actually protecting the marines. The liberators are not one shotting the marines. Mm -hmm. You don't see that every day. <laughs> That's okay. very true. Four, four liberators survived in a BC. Let's see the sieges. Sieges are good. BC jumped, and this BC jumped as well. Okay, and now Eskimo Joe realizes what's happening. What? How is he gonna respond? And he Vikings. actually he responds with Vikings. Yeah. Mm, I would love to see him selling Reapers. Uh, Vikings, I think it's not bad choice, but probably anti-armor missile is more important. Like you, you, like how I see it, you can get Vikings with anti-armor. Just Vikings without it, I would say is. Well, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Maybe it's gonna be enough. But I think yeah, I one agree. Raven is like a, a must. 
versus this kind but of I, strategy. I agree with you. I'd like to see him sell the Reapers and really try to counter and, and respect what Bunny's doing, right? Because Bunny, he went for that air switch to try to stack and bring this game around. And so I would really like to see Eskimo Joe respond to it heavier. In, in this situation, actually, funny enough, uh, Reapers are okay because they they keep Dark White, uh, Dark White back. Because Reapers move front and then basically it exposes more the, the Liberator. So there's pros and cons in broad situations. There's a lot of Liberators actually going to survive. You can see eight Liberators. Uh, C inside is uh, adding Phoenix to jump in and, and catch them. Okay, let's see the Sieges. Yeah. The problem with the Reapers is that if, if you don't sell them, then you don't have enough minerals to actually counter what Bunny's doing. As it, you kind of want to respond to what Bunny's doing. He sold a lot of his units. You want to respond to that as quick as possible. You don't want to leave it uh, over time. You really want to just completely crush it as soon as possible. Agreed uh, had enough anti-air to clear all the leaked liberators. So there's another wave of leaked liberators. Uh, there's plus two armor, but there's not enough anti-air to kill the mutilist corruptor. I would love to see a couple maybe widow mines or... Um, Something on that kind of a field. Okay, now two BCs. But here comes the cleanup crew from Nedbed, and well, it's doing its job. It's cleaning up somewhat. Now, C inside is forced to use his disruptors just to try to push Nedbed, but he still manages to stack. There's still. Uh, Viking still alive. Ling Muta doing an excellent job against the pro the stalkers. So basically, I, I would say keep the BCs in front of the lips, disable, tell, uh, disable the tactical jump maybe. Okay, Darkway comes and save the lips. Three lips survived. Yeah, there's a lot of Vikings from Eskimo Joe. I think Vikings is a good call here. Probably he's going to go add some Thors as well now, since he's T3. Like selling a couple of Reapers, I think like 50% of them, I think it's uh, fine. Just to get... Did I sell Medivac? Oh no, he's selling Medivac. So just to get uh, extra, uh, extra minerals to reinvest. Okay, yeah, the Thor is already out, and this is gonna start doing tons of damage against those battle cruisers. The Thor is really a hard counter to the BCs, and then the Vikings can just clear the Liberators. I don't really see a lot of stacking potential for Sweet Elephants. This game has been going on for 16 minutes now, and it's been uh, Eskimo Joe's teams just controlling middle, right? They've had middle income for just such a long time now. Three gases to sweet elephant zero gases and yeah i don't i don't really see any any coming back but everyone loves joe did it la last match maybe it's time now for sweet elephants to do it um i'm not sure what the greed is implying with this xp is it experience or he's doing this uh crossed mm -hmm. eyes uh, with the tongue out of the mouth kind of a smiley thing He might be laughing that he's not doing Ravagers again. <laughs> Maybe he will add it just for the memes of it. Okay, there's a Thor. Uh, Vikings have plus two. There's Lotus. so many Corruptors and Vikings too. Like, nothing surviving from air. Like, all of the air is going down. So, and. Bunny tried to stack air, right? He tried to go for that uh, battle cruiser liberator, mm -hmm. but like Eskimo Joe's team just has a lot of anti air. Well, the Bunny went for that strategy, but the thing the, there's one tricky thing about the strategy is that when you are calculating how many lips and battle cruisers you need, you have to take account that you need to spend a lot of money on upgrades too. You need liberator upgrade, you need armor upgrade. So basically, 
you kind of have to go with one less liberator just so you can afford upgrades uh, sooner because in the first wave when the liberator spawned they didn't have t3 and basically the surprise element is kind of gone in the next wave uh, okay oh, planetary is getting, fortress. A, getting a lot of damage from corruptors and yes gg Everyone loves Joe with a 2-0 lead over Sweet Elephants. With very convincing games too. Like this game was a lot more convincing. That last one, right after, it seemed like they had it all planned, right? Like after they took middle at 22 minutes, they never let go. It seemed like that was their plan all along. Cause they, they, they were trying to go for that strategy since the beginning of the game. So, so far it's been... Uh, everyone loves Joe's plans going well for them. Well, definitely interesting games. Like I'm checking the unit compositions as well. Also, Sweet Elephants, PTC, it's not working. So are they going to switch it up this time finally? Well, to what? To Protestant and Terran or different form of PTC? Well, they need to try something different, right? Like, I, anything different would be great. S some, even TTC of their own, maybe, or, or, or PTT could also be a thing. Maybe, some, maybe, we see. So okay. something different, because the, this PTZ is not working. Everyone loves Joe is just very ready for it. Okay. Let's see if we are going to see much of screenshots right away, or maybe they are communicating strategy, what to do. Yeah, that's a good point. Sweet Elephants, like, the nerfs get to you, right? Like, you're, you're down 0-2, what you had planned, it's not working, you tried it twice, it failed twice. Even in that one game where you felt like you had the lead for all the game, you were, you know, very confident uh, countering what your opponent was doing and somehow they managed to come back like that that does put a lot of pressure on them so i, I wouldn't even be I, I wouldn't even mind them just taking like a minute break and really like strategizing okay what went wrong what can we do differently uh what kind of plan are we going Cause ptz is not working yeah well you kind of have to be very careful about this kind of a game analysis like in the middle of the series because it's it's very easy that the blame game can start right you remember for example i i'm i'm usually pretty um pretty dense. why is my should not capture Yeah, I, I'm okay. Let's see what do we have. So we currently don't see any matchup screenshots. So I, I assuming that the teams are strategizing what to do because this is the match point for everyone loves show. So basically, you have you have to win three games in a row for Sweet Elephants to come back here. And we haven't really seen a reverse sweep so far, right? So this would have to be like the one reverse sweep of the tournament for it to work for Sweet Elephants. And it, it can happen, right? But I'd like to see them changing strategies. Maybe with a different strategy they could pull it off. Let's see when, once we get those screenshots. Mm-hmm. You think everyone loves Joe's gonna switch to Zerg again? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what to predict. Like I have no clue. I have no idea what's gonna happen now. Uh, what kind of strategies they're gonna they're gonna have at the moment. You think they're finally gonna put pull up a Protoss? We haven't seen them really going for that one Protoss strategy. Like there's not a single Protoss in their games.
Yeah, no idea. No idea. I just noticed that my Discord pop-ups are laying up. I need to disable them. I'm in a streamer mode. I'm not sure why things are popping up. Okay, should be fine now. Okay, let's see. So they are still everybody's in their own parties. I'm not sure if they have switch positions or anything like that. Okay, we got the matchups and it's going to be everyone loves Joe with CTT, so the same style they played last match up against Sweet Elephants who's going for the TCP. So they did switch it around this time. Uh, very interesting. They went for the Protoss on the third lane. Maybe that can be the difference. Yeah, but there's Zerg after Protoss. Zerg was his turn. So this is the danger, danger matchup. This is the... So... I, I think... We have to, I, I have to kind of give advantage to everyone loves Joe here, just because the position wise Tyron is versus Protoss, so Nedved I'm 100% sure is going to go Raven Liberator again. So basically, they sacrifice the early game, they lose the bunker, and then they push back. And after that, Agreed is versus Tyron, so we're going to expect uh, Ravagers, and after that, Mutalist Corruptor follow up. Yeah, so we might get a 3-0 semi-final. So I, th I, I think uh, I agree with just taking like a couple minutes off just to cool the heads and kind of think a bit what would be the what would be the counter strategy to that kind of a build. But definitely it's going to be a bit uh, rough time to Sweet Elephants to kind of pull this out. So yeah, everybody's taking a small break. So what do you think, Nova, about the overall tournament situation currently? Well, everyone loves Joe. Is It came with a new strategy, right? Uh, TTC, and that's worked out so f well for them. Like, right now, it seems like it might get them to, to the finals. Uh, very interesting. So the meta is developing while the tourney is going on. And and so that that is really exciting. Like, we're getting new builds. Everything's different we still have to strategize like the, the game is not stale at all like the meta has been switching from every tourney to every tourney so very exciting stuff and we're gonna get to see that ttc style right uh that everyone loves joe is doing we might get to see it up against grumpy kittens and it's gonna be interesting how they manage to face like how do they manage to counter it right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think we're going to have a heck of a finals if that happens. Well, the winner of this one goes to meet the Grumpy Kittens in the finals, right? And Grumpy Kittens yeah. are, I assume, watching all of the streams and watching all the replays here to understand, okay, what is oh, the I, mistakes that we need to I bet you, I bet you 100% that they're looking at these games like an owl. Like they're, 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 they're definitely staring watching, seeing every strategy, and seeing how to counter it. So I'm very interested to see what they can do and how that's going to switch up the meta. Mm -hmm. Because when we went into the games, remember, in the quarterfinals versus everyone loves Joe, like, we kind of didn't... We kind of expected, but we didn't understood, like, up to the degree what is the perfect counter and what is the um, what is like uh, how strong the build is like like timing wise because the, there's a thing that 
you kind of have this false confidence that you're pushing, but basically when you're pushing, you're kind of helping them stack. So you kind of have this false confidence and you just need to relax for one wave and that's it. It's GG. So basically we're waiting on Nedved at the moment. Okay, Amsax had no comments. <laughs> Very fun. Three Zerg Ravagers. <laughs> that would be fun to see, just watching everyone go Ravagers to try to beat uh, TTC. Three Zergs, I think, is the second worst matchup race combination, right? Three Zergs? Three Zergs, yeah. It's uh, like the second worst performing combination. I think people, like, you can play out Triple Terrans. But uh, triple Protoss and triple Zerg is probably like uh, you kind of uh, <laughs> rather <laughs> rather avoid kind of a thing because with the Protoss is okay you're gonna get like uh, you're gonna get pretty strong advantage in the early game but then after like ten minutes you just fall apart. So Nedved is probably in the bathroom or something, so we need to wait out. Yep, warming those. Gamer hands needs to be ready to micro those liberators and ravens. Okay, we're getting ready. We're getting ready. We're just waiting for one player and we'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. So, winner of this one meets Grumpy Kittens and uh, and uh, loser of this series goes to meet Chill Mode. Oh man, if we get that um, sweet elephants against Chill Mode in the I I in the th for the third place, I have no clue who's gonna take it there, man. Like I have absolutely no clue. Like I, I'm if if that game happens, if that match happens, I'm very excited to see it. But I'd be equally excited to see show mode playing up against everyone loves Joe. Like I'd be equally excited to watch that. That would be talking trash at his event. Okay, good luck, have fun. Game three, match point for everybody loves Joe. And we have dangerous race matchup we have protoss terra nedved raven liberator versus protoss and we have agreed zerg follow-up versus terran so i expect they're gonna do the same thing that they did previously and um, they're gonna basically lose the bunker in the first couple minutes in the third or fourth wave and then uh, since the t3 kicks in for the for nedved oh sorry which so when the T3 kicks in for Nedved and he stacks enough Raven Liberator, then basically you just go and kill Terra with, together with Ravagers. So we'll see. Okay. We'll see. We'll see what kind of a and combat. Uh, yeah, agreed. Counter already shot. starting. Agreed. Already starting with his signature move, right? Instantly two Roaches tier two. So definitely gonna go for Ravagers. And from the bottom side, we got Nedved. He still hasn't committed to tier 2. He's waiting around to see what C inside does. But I think as soon as he sees the adepts from C side, he's going to commit to that tier 2. One thing that I'm thinking at the moment. Maybe uh, I'm I'm not 100% sure, so I'm kind of throwing dart in the dark at the moment, but I think Dark White could probably as a zerg need to have T3 relatively early. Just to push out one or two wipers to parasitic bomb Nedved. And then Protoss has easier time cleaning that out. But I'm speculating here, I'm not 100% sure, I haven't tested it. So it's just a speculation on, the, uh, on my set. Because the things that I usually say that, like, this works, this doesn't work, that's usually based on experience and in houses and, and all, the, all the testing that we have done. But in this area, I'm speculating at the moment. Okay, and Bunny going for Marauders. 
and Reapers. Pretty standard. Oh, look, agreed. Actually, almost. Uh, is he gonna push? Oh. Yeah, he's gonna. This bunny had all the units perfectly lined up. Uh, I think it, it'd be yeah. a good idea to spread a bit more. Like uh, what Eskimo Joe is doing, like that kind of a spread with, with, with Reapers. Okay, and we get a scan on Nedved, revealing that he is going for four Ravens. And C inside is very prepared. He already has a ton of stalkers, no sentry, which this is what you want. So let's see what kind of blinks we're gonna get out of C inside. And so far, it is exactly as Jerso said. Uh, the bottom team, like Sweet Elephants, manages to kill the bunkers on maybe wave four, maybe wave three or five. Like the bunker's gonna go down before, probably before the five minute mark. We can say that. And then somehow. It the should, Ravagers it should. and the Liberators. Let, let, let me correct myself, it should go down. <laughs> like, it may not, but it should. Yes. I agree with that statement. And now we have a lot of Marauders and Stalkers hitting the, the bunker. But the shields are gone, the There's health no is already forward. at 50%. There's auto blink on, no blink forward. If if C would disable auto blink and blink forward, the bunker is dead here. So that's what I mean, it should go down, <laughs> but it's not like it... It, it could not as well. But yeah, the, the bunker killed the Marauders, which is not supposed to happen because the stock, you're supposed to blink forward with the Stalkers to protect the Marauders. You really want the Marauders alive and hitting the, the bunker. They are the structure killers. Oh, look at that interference matrix and tons of turrets. The Stalkers are going down. Are the Ravens going to stack? There's disable but is gonna Oh he blinked in the in the turrets. I think this one goes down. Yes. So there's gonna be a couple of stalkers left. Just pull pull on the sides, well, pull on the sides. Bunny oh, has man. all the bio pretty much clumped up, there's nothing in the back. But I think with the stalker help it's gonna be enough. And the bunker is gonna be saved by the bio. Eskimo John saves the bunker. Okay, okay the fungal is pretty strong. <laughs> fungal is really good. I think fungal is out range. Like, uh, it could, it, it, it's there to not die. So how does our body blocking the infester? It can't, the, it could be a disadvantage. Okay, there's a fungal on the ravens. It's very good. Nice blink on the sides. Still uh, no liberators from Nedved. And actually, Nedved is going down tier three. So he's gonna try to go for a liberators with tier three. I think his idea is just T2 lips doesn't do anything, so I just keep it and build ravens until I get T3. Okay, actually, and not cast your curse for once. The bunker actually went down before the five minute mark, as yes. we predicted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At least, like, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, like, hit, on, hit, hit uh, uh, ourselves on the shoulder, you know? Pat, 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 that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> or not. Because <laughs> <laughs> at least we called one thing correctly <laughs> in all the games that we have casted. But yes, barely, I right? I, ha I can die happy now. Yes, yes. Well, don't die. I need you. Like, wait until the series <laughs> at least finishes. Just okay. wait for the finals first. Yes, let's see the fungals. Okay, there's one fungal. There's going to be a chain fungal. Yes, there's a chain fungal. Very nice. Okay, there's a blink forward. Nice, nice target. Zealots. zealots from C inside, very nice. You do want a couple of zealots to help out against the turrets. They are pretty tank. They're surprisingly very tanky. And they help out against <clears throat> uh, that widow mine tank Thor when it comes out. So you, you do want like two or three zealots that it really helps. I, I, I'm. I mean, like, Nedved was full front. I'm kind of curious why. Like, I'm interested why he... Now he's moving back. And probably agreed he's going to add Mutalisks to save the libs. I think Nedved hey. holded money because he got three Liberators at the same time. Oh, man. It's painful to watch those Banelings with no Bane speed. <laughs> They're just walking. And But they it, it is enough. Dark White clears. And now here comes the Liberators. Mm -hmm. I think and I'm speculating here, but I think Vipers need to come out like next wave. Like uh, Darkwing needs to go T3. 
Like, it could be way too early. Uh, the scepter is on the wrong side. It could be uh, way too early. But still, this a shot. I'm, I'm thinking, like, uh, don't quote me on this on the public chat rooms, but I'm just thinking. What do you think now if you go as a Zerg T3 at 7 minute mark just to uh, parasitic bomb the Libs? I am not a very strong Zerg on 3v3. And so I would say I'm not very confident on giving advice on how to Zerg, especially when it comes to Vipers. Okay, Dark is gonna need to clear triple leak. There's two Ravagers and a Liberator. I, I would say though, okay, since nice. Nedved is going for that like what 10 plus liberator that viper sounds like a really great idea mm -hmm. because you kind of need to do you need to help protoss to clear this right because protoss on himself oh there's a storm okay i like that one there's a one phoenix um uh, would be nice to see an immortal okay, ravagers are consistently uh, sorry disruptors are consistently getting three ravagers that is kind of a minimum amount you want like that, is, that is a fine amount to kill. There's three Liberators now. I don't think there... Is there going to be enough anti here? Let's see, there's enough Marines. Okay, Liberators died. So basically, like, what I'm thinking, I think you need to start, like, uh, as seen said, I think you need to start selling... Uh, you need to start selling a couple of Stalkers just to get an Immortal out and get more units out that you actually need versus this kind of wave. I, I have a hypothesis about it that it's not tested. That I think you need to start selling at least like 30% of stalkers and get like extra immortal, extra high templar, extra phoenix, YJ. Because the stalkers are not really doing anything because the ravager mute is gonna catch up. Yeah, the, the stalkers really fall out. Like once you get 15 minutes, 20 minutes, the stalkers really start falling out insanely quickly. Like they're, they just die so fast to, to Liberator, Thor, and Marauders. Agreed with this clutch swarm host. Saved most of the Ravagers. Okay, there's more libs. There's six libs now this way. Let's see okay, if uh, Bunny can take that. If he can handle six libs. I don't think he's ready for it. Look at the amount of Liberators still alive. All of them are down. And now there's more Liberators from Nedbed than there is Bunny. Okay. And there is still a Corruptor alive. Even some Medivacs, surprise, funny enough. Well, medivacs are not bad if you have zero follow-up, right? Oh, but the Ling Bane didn't clear the bio, and now the bio completely clears Dark White, and it is Elephant... Uh, sorry. Everyone loves Joe taking that middle again. After losing Bunker, they managed to take the middle after nine minutes. Yeah. And the, and the T3, T3 stack is here. Let's see if C can do as much damage as he can, but Voidre unfortunately started hitting. Voidre doesn't do anything with plus zero versus Raven. He does three damage per shot, and Raven can take like a lot of those. Yeah, and Dark White was, they she was kind of counting on having middle for a while because she did go for that Ling Bane style, and you kind of want to be pushing for that Ling Bane style to really work because now the Ling Bane is gonna be hitting the Ravagers. And see now, now Eskimo Joe completely clears out Dark White easily, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, because look, there's so many Marauders in front to tank the Ling Bane for for days. So investors kill the Marines very quickly, but they don't kill Marauders very quickly. Yes, that's true. That's why Hydralis Lurker comes in. Oh, look at that blink forward, blinking right into the siege and the liberators clear everything really quickly. Yeah, it's very, very hard to micro uh, stalkers perfectly to avoid. Because you need, you only have like one blink, but you need to avoid like three things. You need to avoid turrets, you need to avoid disable matrix and the liberator zone. So it's kind of very hard to decide when and where to blink. Okay, this is actually not bad. There's a... Yeah, uh, uh, Void is survived, Immortal, three, three Liberators, a couple of Ravens. All of, all of Bunny's Liberators were stacked, but agreed that not bile them down. And so now there's still three Liberators alive. Yes, and... Bunny got range. I think that's uh, that's the thing. Um, Bunny had range and Ra Ravagers could not reach them anymore. 
Oh, but look at the Medivax. They're actually doing a lot of work here because the Marauder is still standing strong even after Lurkers and Fungals. Okay, maybe uh, a Microbler Shroud would be good to help out the Protoss as well. You can turn the Microbler Shroud and the Liberator is going to do way less damage here. Okay, let's see if... Okay, plus one on Voidress. That's good. Plus two, maybe. Okay, and here comes the Muta to save the Libs. So now... Agreed's Muta help the lib stack. Is this gonna be enough? There's also Corruptors here, so the libs are very well protected and they're getting all of their damage. And now, look, Bunny has no ground units left. Like, only a couple Marines and they're gonna go down very quickly. Yeah, yeah but the thing is, uh, basically what Bunny needs to do, he needs to do just enough to clump it, to clump the Eskimo Joe up and then Link Bane is gonna do the rest. And there's a microbial shroud, so the lips of the Eskimo didn't see the lips in time. Uh, I think this is good. Let's see if Dark White manages to save energy for another microbial shroud. That would be perfect. Uh, C didn't save the storm. That is a bit unfortunate, but maybe it's not going to be that devastating. So yeah, definitely the microbial shroud no. would be perfect here. Okay, yeah, let's... and... Right Plus now, two. I just saw C inside blink all of his stalkers into the Liberators, doing uh, Nedved a favor, gifting him those stalkers. Because yes. they were not even in range of the Liberators. Like, the stalkers couldn't hit the Liberators, and they all died really quickly. So I'm not sure about that blink. This is very close fight for the middle. Yeah, because the problem is, the more you push Everyone Loves Joe, the more they seem to stack. And so... It seemed like for a moment there, Sweet Elephants managed to push and take middle. But now that just made the stack even stronger. Look at the amount of Liberators coming out of Nedbed. Like, how much does he have? He has seven Liberators stacking. And now they're going to take down the bunker, maybe? No. Blink forward from C inside manages to save the bunker. Oh, but actually, all the Stalkers are going down. There's still enough Marauders here. Can it uh, below 50% HP, but it's still gonna survive? Yeah, it looks there. And Nether is adding doors. That's a nail in the coffin for Protoss. And Widow Mines, too. Like, he has so many Widow Mines now. Oh, look at Agreed with his own, adding his own Ling Bane. And the cannon goes down at the 14 and 45 minute mark. And you can see Eskimo Joe now with two gases. So he's feeling very comfortable here. I think this is going to be a 3-0. Yes, yes. Well, my caster course is fulfilled since I called like it's going to be five game series. But the game's not over. Uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So they still have to finish up. But yes, definitely it looks like Eskimo Joe. Everybody, everybody loves uh, everybody loves Joe team has solidified. Every wave is solidifying their victory of the series. They have three gases, two from Eskimo Joe. So Nedved is not gassing. I, yeah. I see um, a YouTube comment. They're asking why is this happening? Like. Sweet Elephants has had middle for like a long time, but they still managed to somehow lose. Like, even with all that extra income that they have, they still lose middle. Uh, Gerso, analysis. Well, money is only one part, right? So you have to account what kind of units you get for that money. And when you're playing at this kind of a level, like, I mean, skill level wise. You, you have to play you, you have to play the matchup right you don't play just your line like if it would be just mirror Terran versus Terran bio versus bio yes mineral income is the king but in this scenario you have 3v3 so you have Terran versus Protoss there's different mechanics that involve so basically what Dark White is doing she needs to start influencing Nedved. So basically what Dark is doing influences Nedved, that Nedved is doing influences next wave. So there's different mechanic behind it that works here. And if you're like if you're not thinking like uh, matchup wise, like thinking about all six six 
race, like all six players all together, there's no way, uh, how to say, like all, let, let me put it this different perspective, like all the best players in Direct Strike, they play the matchup. They play all six races together. So basically there are things that you do and you don't do just based on not your race line, but do something else. And how the Protoss works is that Protoss is very strong in an early game and Terran is very strong in a late game. So basically if you manage to survive the early game and manage to stack, so basically Nether's full back and then comes in like a, a Link Muta to save it. They just need to stack once and that is enough to push over. And if they push over, they just add uh, DPS units and uh, close it out. Right, because then you suddenly have a lot of Liberators protected by Mutalists, protected by Corruptors. And so those Liberators are just free to keep doing tons of damage to whatever the wave is. Like, it, it doesn't matter what the wave is. It, it's going to do tons of damage to it. So, so basically, uh, like, another line of philosophy here is that basically as a pushing team, right, In uh, when you win the early game, you have to succeed every wave. You have to win every wave you have to clear the stack every wave and you only need to lose or make a mistake once to opponent team to turn you over but the difference here is that you need to do that every wave and when it comes to the defending team who are trying to stack they only need to succeed one time that's the difference basically the, there's a lot of pressure on pushing team to succeed every wave well, the defending team needs to succeed only one wave, right? And yes, yes, that there is a lot of things going on. And I would also add that liberators are very good. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, they are relatively cheap unit. Like that's what I, I was talking in one of the previous game. Like based on the response that is required, especially from Protoss, liberators too cheap. Like uh, take account like Voidray is 260, right? And liberators 225. And who is the bigger danger? Yeah, definitely Liberator is a very big danger. And so, yeah, but that's like topic for a different day. I think just going back to the game, uh, but Eskimo, uh, everybody loves Joe teams doing their solid defend their late game. They're getting gases, maybe a bit over gassing in this situation. Like just sticking on a man gas would be fine. But I think it's still fine. Nedved's adding ghosts, he's adding video mines. I think uh, Nedved is having fun at this point, right? With ghosts. He's not over making liberators, which I like. So basically, he's trying to be more optimized because actually, he could lose here. No, too many tours. So, needs to be more solid, solid overall build. Oh, look at the Ling Bane crashing against the bio, completely wipes it out. And now it's Mutas against Thors. The Thors don't really do that well against Mutas. And Agreed cleans out Bunny easily, no problem. And now the Ravagers actually also getting lots of value. Killing the Mutas, killing the Hydras. Mm -hmm. Ravagers, agreed. man, are really are doing really well. Like I, I like Agreed's micro on the Ravagers. He, he hits the Biles, he, they land, they clean tons of stuff up. Like, it, it's doing really well for them. And now you have Marines with Medivacs against Void Rays. That's... <laughs> Void Rays don't do a lot of DPS against Marines, especially with a Medivac on top. Because the, the problem is that uh, Void Rays are plus two, while you have the Marine, which is actually three, three. Mm. And so the upgrade advantage goes heavily for the Mar Void Raids really need that upgrade advantage in order to push. That's kind of the weakness. Like, as a bio, you can get a lot more upgrades than the Protoss can. Yeah, it's 21 minutes in the game, and in 4 minutes, T4 comes in, and uh, with a T4... Uh, Nexus is in danger as well. Well, the problem is that nothing is stacking for Sweet Elephants, right? And see inside, he's trying, he has Disruptors. He's actually landing his Disruptors really well. Like, all of his Disruptors are, are hitting tons of bio. He's landing tons of kills. Also because Eskimo Joe's really clumped up still. 
So those disruptors are just hitting absolutely everything, but even that is not enough. So Eskimo Joe is celebrating with the third gas. Um, I guess they are in, in in their communication channels. They are already celebrating the victory of this series, which is I, I I guess well earned in this situation. Like they did practice and the 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 build that they brought in this tournament is very strong. That definitely needs the respect. So. Grand Beginners as a uh, next opponent uh, are watching and analyzing the situation, trying to understand what would be the perfect counter uh, for this kind of a build. Maybe even skip Protoss, just play Terran, oh, Terran Zerg. That's definitely they're definitely an gonna they're definitely gonna put this game on replay <laughs> and watch it a couple of times to get ready for it because they they know what 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 their team is gonna do, right? Like it's not like everyone loves Joe has been switching the strategies around. It's been mostly Terran, Terran Zerg. Mm -hmm. And so, well, they tried they're... Protoss, Protoss, Zerg, Zerg, and that didn't work out. But that is okay. Like that's the that kind of race uh, uh, choice is not very strong. Set not very strong setup. But yeah, definitely they are showing quality and uh, definitely needs to be respected as well by the by the next opponent in the finals. But the uh, game is not over. There could be like very like one percent chance of pushbacks but since there's vipers out and all the good units uh, it's basically practically impossible theoretically possible practically not because even if they push push over the income advantage is so huge like the mineral mineral income advantage this commando is adding uh liberators as well Thors is adding uh, probably would sell the medivac since you're pushing you don't really need them anymore reinvest the money in more DPS. I mean, when you think about it right now everyone loves joe has seven gases plus the six from middle against sweet elephants that have zero gases so the the income difference is definitely there and now as you said tier four is gonna hit in and i think i think this is death by a thousand cuts right like it, as time goes on that tier four keeps piling in and Pretty soon you're gonna start seeing the Ravagers start getting closer and closer to that Nexus and they start biling it down. And I think they're gonna get the victory again. Look at these vials, man. They're just not letting Dark White stack anything. Even the Corruptors, they're all getting a lot of AoE damage. That's very true. Okay, uh, there's T4 coming in. I'd love to see Deceptors maybe in front a bit, just to get the first shots off, but well, I think it's okay as it is as well. Definitely yeah, interesting either. series, like uh, there's gonna be a lot of studying going on now. Look at the amount of Ghost Nedved has, he's bumped that up to 5. I think it's okay, like basically you just spread them out and EMP everything, you get the EMP upgrade, uh, it, Enhanced shockwaves, you just EMP everything that's here and you have easier time cleaning it. I think when you're pushing at 25 minutes, it's perfectly okay to get ghosts. Versus Protoss, especially. Like, versus other, like, it's question like, yeah, yeah. Versus Terran, not really, and versus Zerg, you could have for Corruptors, but for Protoss, I think it's good. Look at the bios, man. All of Dark White's army is like clumping on top of each other. You have the Corruptors on top of the Hydras. And so the bios are just getting insane amounts of value. Dark White's army isn't even reaching Joe. And then you have the Thors lining up against C inside. And so all of his void raids keep getting cleared out. Look at this. C inside is not even going to... Like, Nedved gets a clean wave. Like, he doesn't even have to fight his own wave. Yes. Uses, like, three NPs on two stalkers, but well, that's, that's okay. That's the beauty, beauty of auto-casting uh, spells, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think he can afford to be wasteful in this scenario, so I'm not going to give any um, any criticism towards that, because I, I do the same. When I'm pushing uh, 26 minutes, I usually let everything auto-cast. I think at this point he he just went to grab a cup of coffee. He's very feeling very confident. He's like, I got this, 
Like, it's fine. You can just let the everything play out. Mm -hmm. Let the income do its job. But uh, I, I think, like, to give credits as well to Sweet Elephants, they had uh, they had pretty solid, like, uh, bottom brackets that they played through. I think it was convincing three zeros if I if I recall correctly. Somebody can point out if I'm mistaken. They had a three one right against risk refugees. Yes, yes, I think I think that happened. Yes, but uh, they are um, C. I don't remember what Dark White played in the previous tournament, but I know that Bunny and C and Dark White are playing for the first time. So definitely, you know, you know how it goes for the first time tournaments is that you don't have that team chemistry like super solid going on. So you need you you are a bit more on the careful side. When you have played a couple tournaments together, you can know where each other is. Then uh, it's it's way easier. Well, if they do lose this game, they're gonna be up against Show Mode, and Show Mode has also gone three one twice. So. It's, I, they're very close, right? Like it, it seems like Show Mode and Sweet Elephants should should be a very close matchup. I'm very excited about that one. Well, the funny uh, thing, but, but, the funny yeah, thing is ahead. that uh, Chill Mode and versus Sweet Elephants, like it's we we play so many in houses together, so they know everybody. They know each other very well, so they know what to expect. They know everybody's kind of skill level, uh, weaknesses and strengths. So definitely, I think that is going to be a very interesting series to watch. Like, okay, it's not about finals, it's not about first place, but when it comes to, like, gameplay-wise, I think we are going to see five games there. Okay, Caster course, okay. maybe. But uh, I, <laughs> I would love to see. Because I think that's going to be definitely a five-game series. Yeah, like, right now, we're, we're not even talking about the game. You, you just saw Dark White stack some Lurkers, but then you have Lurkers up against Thor Liberators. And so the, the, lur the Lurkers are really not being active. Now comes Agreed with a lot of Ling Bane Ultra. This game is very one-sided. I think we might see a greed take down the Nexus in a couple of waves. Mm -hmm. Or if they don't, like, it doesn't even matter. Like, they're very confident. You see Joe. Now, four gases. Like, they already know they, they have this game in the bag. This, uh, this game is in the bag. Well, basically, you have to sell, like, half the units for anything majorly to happen. Because even if the Lurkers survive, they are not doing enough damage fast enough to to turn the game quickly enough because okay they, it definitely helps to damage the next wave and damage the um, damage more than necessary but it's not enough to be game turning okay and here you have C inside trying to go for a mothership but the problem with the mothership is that there's doors and ravens right so the the ravens can interference matrix the mother mothership and that's a lot of value there 240 minerals disabling 900 and then the Thors just can clear the mothership so quickly. As long as they're on top of their game, they're scanning, the mothership shouldn't be that impactful. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. And it's quite expensive unit, right? 900 minerals. It's yeah, that's the, very expensive for, for a Protoss that's mineral starved. That's the uh, most expensive unit there is in the game. After that is only Battlecruiser. And that's like, what, 500? Yes. Almost half, yeah. And, okay, Dark White has Lurkers, but even the Lurkers are just completely getting wiped against the Marauders. The Marauders are very good against Lurkers. Now the Disruptors aren't clearing everything anymore. You can see Joe is even adding his own Ghost. Mm -hmm. Well, the Mothership survived. Until it doesn't. The time warp uh, for the, uh, the mothership spell time warp is actually pretty interesting. You can save nexuses just with that if you put it in front for the most DPS units. <laughs> so Ultra yeah. War. So they're just hugging each other. Yes, it's it's uh, 21st century. It's okay to be, you know, like the same gender. <laughs> so Nexus is still full health, but uh, since the double T double T4 already kicked in, the second level of T4, 
the ultra lists are gonna get closer and closer to the nexus and uh, since uh, bunny is not full front to save it then the ultra list bane could hit that any any minute now the uh, agreed is always the first one to get the gas um and in this game he's He's stuck in two. It's okay. Like he got uh, from 150 mineral investment, he got 530. And ultra okay. go 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 go. Yeah, the ultra lists are getting very close to the nexus, but there's enough ultras out of dark white to defend the nexus. We can see that maybe with tier 4 level 3, I think that the Ultras might get closer to the Nexus. But the thing is, like, they still win on income advantage, right? So there's really no saving grace here for Dark, for, for Sweet Elephant, right? Like, they have nothing to look forward to. It's not like once they hit the, the 40 minutes come, they're going to win on income. They're not stacking. Like, this is just a slow death. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, Sweet El um Everyone Lord Joe is prolonging it because they I think they're gonna go for twelve gas strategy. Basically if they would skip the game probably it would be already over, but I think they're having a bit of a fun. It's okay. Like I have done the same thing, so I, I can't can't say anything. Yeah, I think they're enjoying them their time in the semifinals before getting to the finals. Mm -hmm. Okay, here comes a lot of Ultra Ling Bane. Will it reach the Nexus this time? And it's very close, but Dark White manages to save it once again with the Ultras. Next, ne next wave is going to be another T4. Another 10% moving speed. So I think that's going to be the calling race for the Ultras. So the Dark White is not going to be in time to save it. And there's a lot of Banes too, right? So the, the Bane Ling's crashing on the Nexus, that, that also might cause it to die very quickly. I'm very yes. curious. They do, like, do you think the Ultras... Do you think the Ultras are going to kill the Nexus, or is it going to be the Baneling? Hmm... Hard to say, probably both. <laughs> anyway, that's, it's, that's it's a, going down anyway. It's going down anyway. Doesn't matter by, by what. <laughs> Just to quickly check army values. Uh, our greed is like 14,000, Bunny is 12,000. So there's 2,000 mineral difference in the first line. Okay, there's a lot of Thors still alive. No, the Thors all go down and now it's gonna be the Ultra Link Bane crashing against the Nexus. Dark White is not gonna be on time. And the Bane Links crash against the Nexus, killing it almost instantly. Everyone loves Joe with a clean 3-0 against Sweet Elephant's gonna move on to the semi- uh, sorry, to the finals. Guaranteeing their team at least $375. Very good job from them. Yes, uh, let's move to the tourney launch so we can get uh, teams in. Okay, let's... Sweet wait. Elephants is not out yet. Like, they, they will play for that third position, so they're not eliminated per se. They still have one mo more match to play. Um, so that, that's going to be a fun match. But for now, let's talk to the players. Can we get the players in? I'm Nedved just typed to me that Joe is gonna join. Okay, we are gonna have Joe here. Let's wait any second. Well, Let's see if they join any minute now. I think he should have access, right? I'm not imagining things. Hey, yeah. hey, Joe. Hello. Hey, guys. Hey, Joe. How's it going? Congratulations, man. Good, man. Intense matches. Yes, yes, yes. Were well, you expecting a 3 0? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I like that confidence. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 everything went fast, but the games were like so intense. Like it was just, I don't know, they were just very intense, competitive games. Everybody played well. Both sides were really good. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, the the build that you guys uh, have brought to this tournament is very strong. Like uh, me and Nova V died to it, and now uh, Sweet Elephants died to it. So, are you are you expecting you're gonna take down Grandpa Kittens with it as well? I mean, that's the goal, right? That we want to, you know, win the finals. So we're, we'll 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 have to see. Maybe we have some uh, surprises in store. Uh, we'll see. More surprises. You got, you know, you gotta save the best for last, right? I see. Is, is it like Teron Zerg Zerg? You know, double Ravager build. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, we'll just have to see. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah. I see. I see. But uh, the yeah, it was uh, those were really competitive games, intense. Yes, especially the first one, right? You guys pushed back on around only around twenty-two minute mark. Yeah, the first game they had us back really bad. I was like, "Whoa, man! I don't know if we're gonna be able to come back from this one." They, they really, I think they got us and like pinned, but I, we were able to uh, stack and push back. So uh, that was that was fortunate. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, me and Noah was saying the same thing. Like, uh, I think these games are the over. We are kind of talking about the second game, and then at one on one wave, there's like, "Oh, actually, there's like six liberators surviving." And uh, yeah, that yeah. was enough. That was enough to turn it around. Yeah, I mean uh, that's that's kind of like our, uh, you know, we, that's that's we we need it. I mean, without that, we cannot come back. So uh, we got fortunate on that round. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Noah, do you have any like questions or comments? No, so far you guys have come up with a different strategy, right? There, and Zerg going for that no Protoss. Um, any reason why you guys are not playing any Protoss? Are we going to see you guys playing any Protoss? Well, that's a strategy uh, question that I don't think they're going to tell. <laughs> like, like I said, I mean, uh, you know, we, maybe there, we might see some surprises in the finals. Maybe you might see something you haven't seen yet. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Sounds good. That sounds yeah. good to me. Hiding the spice. It's okay, no. Yeah. Uh, so you have something to predict as well. <laughs> okay, well, um, no, I have nothing else to say except I want to congratulate Joe, man. Like you made it to the finals. Like, how does that? That must feel really well. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think this has got to be the toughest uh, tournament since I know. I mean, a lot of teams, a lot of really good players, a lot of like real competitive. Play. Uh, I, it's just been a really like uh, good, solid tournament. Uh, I think. Yeah, a hundred players plus registered for the tournament, and now it's down to you guys against Grumpy Kitten. Yeah, I mean, it's been going on for you know over a month, so it's yeah, it's been a lot, a lot of games, a lot of players, all kinds of builds, and it just comes down to the final. Yeah, it's kind of it has to be stretched out for a month because it's very hard to put so many people in. Like, it's very hard to like okay, hundred people. Let's squeeze all the games in one week or two weeks. Like, it's not not. I don't think. Oh yeah, there's possible. no way you could do it. Yes. But uh, I mean, that's what I'm saying. This has got to be the biggest tournament ever because of you know the how many player the player pool and all the teams. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, but like, uh, uh, thanks for uh, the casting, the our games. Uh, we appreciate it, and uh, look look forward to the final. Yes, thank yes. you guys for showing us great games. Like it's been very enjoyable to watch. It's been very spingy, so it makes for more exciting games. And I wish you the best of luck in the finals. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. Yes, yes, definitely. Grumpy Kid is gonna give you some uh, hard time. Oh yeah, we expect that. I mean, uh, <laughs> we know it's not. It's, it's going to be a, a tough final, but we'll do our best, and uh, hopefully, we'll come out on top. Sounds good. All right, uh, congratulations again, Joe. Uh, congratulations to Agreed, Nedved, and uh, Tiger as well as your backup in the team. And uh, we'll see you guys in the finals, and we will see it Sweet Elephants versus uh, Chill Mode in uh, for the game for the third placement game.
Uh, I think the team schedule is probably is coming up soon when the games are going to happen, but my suspicion, like, I, I suspect it's going to be on a weekend, either this one or next one. All right, well, thanks again. Appreciate the cast, and 